Alright, let's update the map a little bit. And most significantly, the road goes by the vacant lot here. And the vacant lot goes southeast to a pier. These are all rocks here, of course. But there seems to be. somewhere so it's like a little path here southeast oh wait no it's still up here yeah um how do I paint up here like this I guess Beautiful. Mm. Text. Pia. What else does it say? Look around. Mm. Still a few boats. Oh, I could examine the boats, of course. Oh God, let's try to at least outline a few boats here. And then maybe one here. Painting with a mouse. Okay, the boats. Boats. Mm. Also. There's a fence around this lot, but I don't think I need to paint that one. Beautiful. Uh, examine boats. Make Michael waits patiently nearby. Um, few fishing boats that remain look barely seaworthy, held together by barnacles and old habit. Enter boat. The boats are not your property, and you have no desire to trespass on what is probably someone's last feeble source of livelihood. That's pretty grim. Okay. So I think I'll go northwest then. Vacant lot. Street fence south here. So this would mean leaving the city, right? I think I want to go around the city more before I leave it. In the Misty Avenue and something. And then this is the other country lane here that we can leave the, the city through. So we still haven't checked out this um, road west of the town square. Though. So if we go west, we'll be in the town square. And if we go west again, in a dark corner, the rooftops above you lean so close together as to nearly block out the sky altogether, making this a particularly dark and unpleasant section of the city. The street leads away to the east, and a shadowy driveway leads through a brick, high brick wall to the south. Michael hurries to catch up. Use the lantern. I do have a lantern. Light lantern. 
You don't have a match. Examine lantern. Oh, it's not on, I guess. Right? Put lantern into pocket. Okay. Street leads away to the east, that's to town square, and a shadowy driveway leads through a high brick wall to the south. Brick walls everywhere here. So, so this kind of ends here, but there is come on, driveway to the south. go south? Sure. Do I want to examine anything? Driveway. Asylum courtyard. Aha! Uh -huh. The grim whitewashed edifice of Denver's asylum bounds this tiny shadowed courtyard to the south. Its narrow barred windows staring blankly down it like ranks of shriveled, empty eye sockets. Empty eye sockets. You can escape through a narrow gateway in the high brick wall to the north. Escape? That sounds ominous. I what? Now I can. Oh, okay, now I can. Then that's was it called Danvers Asylum? Why didn't that work out? Inverse Asylum. I don't get it. Okay, that'll work. Um, also, we're away from the ocean now. <coughs> Exile. 
asylum. The whole place exudes a sense of oppressive claustrophobia. Standing in its shadow for even a second is enough to make your skin crawl. Even the teeming, seemingly innocuous motto emblazoned over the main entrance fills it with an inexplicable sense of foreboding. Read motto. Health, discipline, tranquility. Emblazoned in an arch over the double snake symbol of the Caducius, somehow you are not reassured. Talk to Michael about asylum. Michael scratches his head. I don't really know much about that, he says. windows okay that's not really anything different I want to go south asylum is closed for the day okay so north dark corner east town square all right so I think we've explored everything there is, um, so we can either go up this country lane or go south here. I think we'll go south first. So we want to go east. Um, right, so the street bends south here, turning into a misty avenue between the trees. South. Chili Avenue. Perhaps it is merely the effect of some wholesome, unwholesome vapor rising from the murky waters of the nearby Miskaton. But the temperature along the street seems perceptibly cooler than normal, even for New England autumn. Two dirt roads lead south and southwest into the dense woods at the edge of town. A clammy mist hangs thickly in the air, seeping through your clothes and making you shiver. Michael hurries to catch up. So, how's the Miskaton nearby now, though? Doesn't make much sense, right? I mean, unless he crosses under the street again here. Or it's just that this still counts as close. I don't, I don't know. Um, Misty Avenue, Chili Avenue. I want to examine anything. X River. X Miskaton. X Miskaton River. Okay. X Woods. The woods are ancient, thick with undergrowth and full of shadows. Branches creak, leaves rustle beneath unseen, half imagined footsteps, and strange bird calls echo through the trees. So I can either go south or southwest, and both of them lead into the forest, I guess. Let's go south. Or X Dirt Roads. X Road. Out there, beyond the boundaries of the city proper, the cobblestones have given way to unpaved dirt. South. Actually, says Michael, I think the house is in the other direction. Um, how about southwest? Hmm. Okay, update. So this is scenic view.
Okay, this is gonna be tough to keep track of, I think. Okay, so the forest was to the south, right? I get that correctly. I mean, we do have a bit of space here, and I do think we need to move, zoom out a little bit now. So let's say the south, this road leads through a wood. Tree, 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 beautiful. Oh wait, I can actually, I think I can actually do this, right? Yeah. Wow, this doesn't look like a forest. <laughs> I don't even know. Forest. Oh no, not in green though. Forest. Mm. And then there's the road to the southwest, it said. As you walk through the mist part before your husband almost deferentially. I didn't read that before. Quickly dissolving away into nothing. That's interesting. The ground begins to rise sharply as the road climbs up into the hills south of town. So southwest there's hills. Mm. How do I even do hills? Good enough. Hills. And then we get to a scenic view. Um, no. Let's call it scenic overlook. Um, let's see if it all lines up. The tree line falls away on the north side of this northwest northeast bend in the road. Also, it bends back north as well. Okay, giving way. To panoramic view of the Miskaton River, River Valley, yeah, uh, and the grubby little town called Anchorhead nestled within it. From where you can, from here you can see the paper mill almost directly to the north. So it's either south of the town or north of the town. Still, I don't know. 
the solitary lighthouse and surrounding ocean, ocean to the northeast, and the dilapidated stone church below you to the east. So there's maybe like a church somewhere around here. Northeast is a lighthouse, like maybe close to the pier or further here, I don't know. I'm not gonna paint these in yet. Running through all this is the oily black ribbon of the Miskaton. And almost directly in the center lies the little clearing of Town Square. Um, you can just make out the shape of the obelisk from here. Okay. So, the road goes back um, northwest from here. <coughs> I think I'm going to look around a bit though. X River. Um, the Miskaton winds down from the northwest then bends a more easterly direction some miles west of town. Its last half mile or so neatly divides the town of Anchorhead in half before emptying into the sea. Its waters are murky and torpid, hiding many old secrets in its languid depths. X Lighthouse. The lighthouse stands tall against the horizon, a dingy white tower amidst a grey sky and greyer sea. Despite the ominous cast to the, we cast to the weather, no beacon is shining from the tower's top. Church. Sto the old stone church lies to the east, its tottering steeple rising high above the dead, dead groping branches that surround it. That surround it paper mill. The dark structure of the paper mill squats broodingly in the crook, in the crook of the Miskaton River. X anchor head. X town square. at you expectantly, waiting for you to lead the way. Okay, so I guess we'll go northwest then, right? Will we? Will we? Northwest? Right. Outside the house! Oh, that's actually it. Okay. The lane runs up from the southeast and ends at a white clearing surrounded by gnarled ancient trees. A wide, curving driveway runs up to the front door of your house, which lies north. The fabled Verlag family mansion looms before you in the gloom, its dark, creaking presence dominating the clearing and, somehow, even though it's not visible enough visible through the trees, the entire valley. The foreboding shadow of the Verlags seems to enshroud all of Anchorhead from here. A typewritten notice has been attached to the door. Michael hurries to catch up. Well, says Michael, this must be the place. We finally made it, honey. We are home. Mm. South East. White clearing. again and then ends in a clearing um, ins insinuating that there's like trees all around still and then there's the mansion here
something like that. <clears throat> Read notice. It's a letter from the Arkham Regional Utilities Company explaining that due to wiring difficulties, the electricity will not be installed until next week. No phone service either, of course. Well, that's wonderful news, remarks Ma Michael Dryly, reading over your shoulder. So we don't have a phone, we have no electricity. I don't have my wallet. Or my purse. This is starting to be... quite the annoyance, I would say. <coughs> hmm. because I don't want to hold it in my hand the entire time. Mm. Okay. So... Um... Diamond Mansion. The house comprises two stories and an attic, and a smaller domed cupola atop the roof. Its windows are unlit and tightly shuttered. Its roof is steep and precipitous, and its grounds unkempt and strewn with weeds. The place unmistakably radiates an aura of thick, cold malevolence. Mm, okay. Are all unlit and tightly shuttered. Do I just want to go inside? I want to look around first again. Examine clearing. Examine trees. The woods are ancient, thick with undergrowth and full of shadows. Yeah, we've had that before. Mm. Unlock the front door. No. North. For ye. Although it appears spacious from the outside, the house's interior feels cramped and gloomy. The walls seem too close together, the ceiling is too high. The doorways leading in several directions are narrow and filled with shadows. Um, the stairs leading up to the second floor are steep and rickety. This is not a house that makes you feel welcome. It is a house that makes you feel tiny and timid, and afraid of dark places. It is a house that makes you feel alone. The front door stands open to the south. Carelessly stacked in a towering heap in the middle of the room are all your luggage and belongings, which you'd send ahead through a moving company before driving up to Massachusetts. Everything you own is boxed away and piled up in the middle of the floor. The reality of this move finally slams home as you stare at the sprawling jumble of stuff and suddenly you feel very lost in the drift. Night has now undeniably fallen, and the house is very, very dark. There is probably just enough residual ambience to feel your way upstairs to the bedroom, but the rest of the house is a needless maze of shadows, and exploring would probably best be done in the morning. Michael strolls along after you. Michael stretches his arms and yawns. Well, he says, I think I'm going to turn in. There'll be plenty of time to unpack and explore tomorrow. Good night, hon. He kisses you on the cheek. Don't stay up too late. And with that, he goes upstairs. Hmm. I do have a lamp and oil, but no match. Currently. Close door. Lock door. Um, put keys into pocket. Um, 
examine stuff. It's all a huge, hopeless mess. Just looking at it, it instantly drains you of any desire to unpack. Unpack. What do you want to unpack? Unpack stuff. Honestly, you just can't muster enough motivation. But it's an ordinary looking key. The word house is written on a tiny piece of tape affixed to the keys tab. Okay, so it just wants me to go to sleep, I guess. Okay then, let's save first though. Stairs landing. A narrow ha hallway runs east from the top of the stairs down the length of the house to the north directly opposite the stairs is the master bedroom. It is pitch, deck, pitch dark and you can't see a thing. Stumble in the dark, smacking that pitifully against the wall. Go downstairs. Okay, doesn't want me to, I guess. Really? Up. Up. Oh god. Am I just lost now? Oh. Oh, okay. Now I can go down, I guess. Yeah. Look for match. Look for match in luggage. But I said, in luggage. Maybe not. Up. North. Master bedroom. The master bedroom is a picture postcard of rusting New England charm. Faded sketches of rural landscapes adorn the walls. A beautifully carved dressing mirror stands in one corner. An old-fashioned accordion radiator gurgles quietly beneath the window. The most striking feature, an enormous antique four-poster bed, must be the largest piece of furniture in the house. Michael is curled up in bed, sound asleep. If it weren't for this hope hopelessly backwater town and the disturbing circumstances surrounding the house, you would say this was your dream home. Even so, as much as you would like to relax and enjoy the comforts of a fully furnished historical New England estate, you can't help but be put off by the shady aura surrounding the family that used to live here. 
Last of the line, you remind yourself, recently committed suicide after killing his wife and two daughters with a shotgun. Involuntarily you shiver, glancing nervously at the doorways to the south and west.